Hunger level, desperate, and ravenous. For the days that I wake up super, super hungry, which is honestly not often, I always have some sort of cereal on hand for me to be able to inhale within seconds and out the door. If I wake up not starving and can wait 15 minutes, I'll grab a chai latte and a ham and spinach frittata from Pret, or I'll make myself an avocado toast with matcha at work. It's usually some combination of eggs and avocado because protein and healthy fats are a great way to start the morning. wake up with a little time to spare, I'll make myself a latte and eat some fruits. I'm very sensitive in general, and even more so to caffeine, so I found myself reaching for my Roy Boss chai a lot these days, which is an herbal tea. Roy Boss is packed with antioxidants, it has 50% more than green tea. That's wild, and has more benefits than green, black, and maybe even matcha. Nutrition is cool and all, but the real reason why I love this tea is because of how it tastes. Hints of honey and vanilla. This tea tastes great with oat milk or whole milk. I added oat for this one, and I also like adding two scoops of collagen powder for 20 grams of protein and some Taiwanese almond powder, which gives it some healthy fats and flavor. These little additions makes the drink far more nutritiously dense, which helps keep me fuller for longer. I usually eat more when I get to work, but in the event that I am unable to because of calls or meetings, at least I'm not starving by the time lunch rolls around. And this beautiful, beautiful persimmon. Fruits are high in antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, fiber, all the good stuff. I think, I think we all know fruits are great by now. mostly only happens on the weekends where I wake up feeling fully well rested and have time to cook myself a nice breakfast. A few weekends ago, I made this healthy hot chocolate and also made a Beyond Burger. But today, let's make congee or shifan or rice porridge. Here I'm going to use a pot from Christelle. Look at how beautifully these are designed. It's so functional and fits well in minimalistic spaces. These also have a lifetime warranty. We'll get more into pots and pans in a bit. Let's get cooking. Food has grown to become a source of strength, happiness, and time for bonding for me, but it hasn't always been this way. I developed a very, very unhealthy relationship with food in my late teens, which carried well into my early 20s. Cutting out food groups because carbs are evil, going vegetarian for ethical reasons, going 80% raw because cooking your food kills all the nutrients, counting calories, restricting diets, constantly fluctuating weight, purposely eating less only to eventually binge. During this time, food was a major source of my stress, frustration and anxiety. It wasn't until being brutally honest with myself that I realized all of this was rooted in wanting to be skinny and to fit into some distorted ideal of what it meant to be perfect. This was the real reason of why I ate healthy and clean and put myself on a bunch of elimination diets. It has taken me the past five years to undo and unlearn most of the things I taught and convinced myself of. Learning to love, accept, and forgive myself played a huge role in slowly chipping away at my attachments to being liked, accepted, and perfect. This journey also helped me realize that food is not my enemy. More so, it is my desire for control and to be in control and to be able to control my life. To be able to shape and mold myself into fitting this vision of what it meant to be good enough. 
These days, I'm all about intuitive eating, learning about what to eat rather than what to eliminate and cut out from my diet. I eat when I'm hungry, stop when I'm full, and listen to my body to feed myself what my body's asking for. No guilt, no restrictions, no dieting. I'll link a few articles on intuitive eating down below if you're interested. With breakfast, it's usually a free-for-all. It really depends on when I wake up, if I have time, and what I'm in the mood for. For lunch, because I'm at work, I have a couple of go-to places. There's Panera. I usually get a half sandwich, half soup. Or there's Chipotle. I usually get a barbacoa bowl with tacos. And it really just depends what I'm in the mood for. But generally, there's some combination of protein, carbs, and veggies. And sometimes it's fries. If that's what I want, that's what I'll get. As for dinner, you guys know how we just talked about intuitive eating, right? Sometimes it's a huge handful of spinach and eggs, and sometimes it's these veggie nuggets and a cake because I want something sweet, you know? Sometimes it's a bowl of udon with a side of fried chicken. It's all about balance, friends. Like this next meal that I'm gonna have. We have really healthy hot pot, and then we get dessert after this cotton candy swirl. I've grown up with a very Western palate where I generally prefer to eat Western style food, be it spaghetti, pizza, anything American. But lately, it's been very, very Asian and I'm all for it. I think it's maybe because I grew up in Taiwan when I was younger. Um, but anyway, the one thing that really stuck with me this past Thanksgiving was more bonding over food and less stressing over food because friends are great and food is great too Although I eat meat, I don't usually cook meat myself, so I'm making my mom cook with me because I never really learned how to and I want to. I grew up vegetarian and the years I spent researching food bore fruits of plant-based recipes. Another reason was that I associated cooking meats and fish with lots of oil and butter which made it dangerously delicious but also dangerously heavy. That said, this stainless steel pot is a game changer high quality made in france with a thermal diffusing base to ensure optimal heat distribution so no need for butters or oils my mom and i both agree that this style of cooking really enhances and brings out the food's natural flavors if you're in the market for said pots and pans you can check out their website below and get 20 percent off with our thai 20. Going back to what I said earlier about more bonding over food, the older I get, the more I'm starting to realize how precious our time is. Time spent with yourself, by yourself, doing things that you love. Time spent with parents, family, siblings, cousins, and loved ones. Time spent with friends. The best is of friends. This is why I've been making use of my meals to bond over food or to bond with myself. Enjoying a nice meal alone in silence can actually be very therapeutic. Some people might see that as being lonely AF, but I think it's, I think it could be a beautiful thing. If you haven't had time to yourself in a while, that's a great time to reconnect with yourself. If you have been by yourself for more often than not, it's a great time to connect with other people. Along with steak, I wanted my mom to teach me how to cook salmon as well. So here we're cooking the salmon with pieces of ginger on the nonstick pan. Very similar to the stainless steel, it does not require any fats whatsoever when you cook. So no flaky mess. Oh yeah. Oh.
when I really have time, I try new recipes and make use of my oven. In my last apartment, whenever I turn on the oven, not even cooking anything, just turn it on, my fire alarm will go off. The apartment was brand new and the oven was brand new. The layout of the kitchen was just really, really silly and poorly designed. The vent sucked in air and blew it straight at the fire alarm. Why? Anyway, all that was to just share with you guys. I'm really excited to start using my oven and to just start trying new recipes in general. I had a free evening over the weekend, so I decided to make a healthy-ish apple pear cobbler. Here I'm cooking the apple and Asian pear without any water, butter, oils, or sauce. While the oven is preheating and the apples are cooking, let's make the crust. So I'm using whole flour and coconut sugar. This was a slight mistake because I never really baked with coconut sugar and it slightly burned. I'm also adding Taiwanese almond powder when you should use almond, like ground almonds. And I also added some rolled oats for texture. This is what it looks like. Now let's opposite crust, anti-crust, crust the other way, uncrust, crust the apple pear cobbler, but the crust is going to be on the top. You guys know what I'm talking about. So let's talk about these handles really quickly. I love the way these detachable handles are designed so that you can easily move from stove to oven and from kitchen to the dinner table to make cookware into tableware. As you guys can see, there are many more colors and finishes that exist. I've just been using and sharing my favorite ones. I haven't gone around to buying oven mitts for my apartment, so this was actually very, very clutch. And you know, me getting excited over cookware, I guess this is adulting. One more thing I'd like to mention, by looking into the brand, by looking into any brand, you can tell what they value or what they don't value, what they stand for, or just maybe sometimes they stand for nothing. And I just want to share with you guys that for a brand like Cristel, you can really tell they care about and respect the environment immensely, both today and in the future. I read on their website that 78% of waste generated by the company is recycled and 100% of the electricity used is obtained from renewable sources. I appreciate their dedication to the planet and how deeply rooted the brand is in its history, heritage, and family culture. There's also a dedication to quality and innovation and user experience, which to me, it's like the Steve Jobs era of Apple for cookware. And I think this says a lot about the brand and this is just all me talking. These are not mandatory talking points. It's just Rowena sharing her thoughts on a brand that she actually nerded out over. Yeah, just looking into the brand, I, I appreciate how much of it is rooted in tradition and culture and staying true to their values and who they are and not settling for less, not settling for anything less than what they feel is right and just. And with that, thank you so much to Christelle again for sponsoring this video and for allowing me to share my food journey and things I eat in a day. If you guys found this helpful, please let me know down below and we can make more videos like this. And as always, voice hug! Love you guys. Thank you guys for joining and sticking till the end. If you guys watched this far, please leave a emoji of your favorite food in the comment section below and we can have a food war like in the cafeteria. <laughs> okay, bye!